Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. Father, anoint us today and let this word prevail, Father. And people that don't believe in you, open their eyes, Father. Now bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody be seated. You know the Bible says that you know there's a God, whether anybody ever told you that or not, because God put it in you to know that. You're like a baby. It knows it's hungry and it cries until you feed it. And you and I and everybody else on earth, inside it's been manifested. God has showed us there is a God. You know that when they first found people in the deepest regions of Africa, they were naked, they were eating other human beings, never seen anybody other than themselves, but yet they knew there was a God. Well, how is that? Just like the Bible said, God shows it inside. We know someone created us. And you know what? God has showed it to us. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Folks, today, if you don't believe in God, you don't have no excuse. Folks, think about it just a moment. I know that these people convinced our kids in school we evolved from monkeys and the Big Bang Theory. That is utter foolishness. You know, here we got a ball of dirt called the earth, and we have something that's invisible. Like this says, it's called gravity. We don't fall off the earth when we're upside down. That right there should prove who made that that way. How can that be that we're upside down on a ball of dirt, but we don't fall off? But even greater than that, folks, do you know that the sun, if it was 10 foot closer, it would fry us? If it was 10 foot further away, we'd be a ball of ice. Somebody put that in the exact spot it had to go. Don't tell me that's a coincidence. And if you really want to get deep in the subject, look at your body. You know, okay, let's say evolution did make us. What if it would have left out one thing like a respiratory system or, or our vascular system or our reproductive organs or our digestive system? Think about it, folks. Can all these things fall into place to be a coincidence? In your eyeball with the rods and the cones and the lid and the lubrication and the swiveling ability, you can look at your body and see that you were articulately designed. There is a book called A 350 Engine in a Junkyard. I think that's the name of it. It's been so long since I've seen it. But it's a, it's a book about if a tornado went through a junkyard, when it passed through, you look, there's a 350 engine with pistons and rods and valves and a carburetor and a spark system. You know someone designed that to make it work. So when the spark plug makes a spark, the valves are open, the gas squirts in, it explodes, it pushes the piston down. There's no way that could coincidentally be made. Someone articulately designed that motor. And folks, you can look at your body and you can see those lungs pulling oxygen. Oxygen, where'd that come from? Well, the trees happen to make that for us. Just so happens that's what you got to have to live. And you know you got a vascular system that pulls this oxygen all through the body and feeds the blood and keeps it alive. And then when you go have a hamburger here in a few minutes, your body starts to digest it, break it, it pulls all the nutrients out of it. And someone designed that. And for us to, to deny that, like I said, the sun's 93 million miles away, 10 foot would make the difference in us frying or freezing. Don't tell me someone didn't make that. Well, <coughs> here's a problem. The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They've done abominable works, and there's none that doeth good. You know what, folks? Human beings are virtually, basically, inherently no good. We're selfish. But it takes a fool to ignore that we were created by a God, and this earth is a created place by God. And to you think that you're going to live this life and die and rot away like a cardboard box, you're going to be sadly mistaken. Because just as this world exists, there's another one out there called heaven. Of course, there's another one down there called hell. In fact, that's what the word hell means, the unseen world. And you don't want to see it. And it's real, folks. It's real. You know what? In Psalms 100, verse 3, it says, Know ye that the Lord, he is God. He is 
It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. You know, this today we have secular humanists and all that that they want to try to make it look like we made our own selves. Folks, we were designed by a creator, and his name is God, and his name is Jesus. But you know, it's like this. We're his sheep, and he is the mighty shepherd. Now, anybody that ever had an animal from a chicken to a cow, you know you can be cruel to that animal, and there's nothing you can do about it. Or you can be kind to that animal. And myself, I, if I go to bed at night and realize I didn't water my hogs or something, I've got to get up out of bed and go give them their water for the day because they tump it over because I'm not going to be cruel to any animal. Or maybe a snake or a mosquito. I don't have much mercy on those. But for a few other animals. And see, God could do that to us, y'all. Do you know what God could do to us if he wanted to? But instead, he chooses to feed you, clothe you. He lets us invent air conditioning. You ever find it odd? And here's two things that I've always found odd if you don't believe in God. He knew that we would get so overpopulated we couldn't use horses no more. And he knew we would invent a combustible engine. But yet he put enough oil in this ball of dirt that we draw 3 million gallons a day out of the ground and it never has run out yet. And according to what they say, we got enough for a thousand years. How did that oil, which just so happens it runs a motor, get in the ground? Because God knows the future. He already saw the movie. And he knew we would invent transportation, and he gave us a fuel to run it. And another thing that always struck me odd, you know, you can't live but one day without water. In two days, you're losing your mind. In three days, you're in convulsions, and you're dying. Water. But it don't matter where you go on planet Earth. You can go to the Mojave Desert and drill a hole and get a water well. God provides water to everybody on this earth no matter where you are at, and we get a drink every day. Somebody put this program together, folks, and if people cannot see that, which today they don't want to see it, and that's the problem with America. But you know what? You and I, we know it, and we love God, and you know where you're at this morning? You're here praising God. Why? Because you're a believer. And you not only believe in him, you believe on him. And you've got faith in him, and you will never die. Listen, enter into his gates in Psalm 100, verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving into his courts with praise. And y'all, be thankful unto him and bless his name. You know what? I not only thank God for the food, the water, and the life we live. My word, we had air-conditioned homes and automobiles and Lord, soft bed. Most of us got beds, you got air in them. We put a little air in it if it ain't comfortable, you know. I mean, we are living in a lap of luxury. We owe it to God. And we need to be grateful to Him and thankful to Him. You know what? This is the greatest thing in verse 5. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting. Oh, folks, I'm so grateful to the mercy God gives. And His truth endureth to all generations. You know something, folks, you and I, even today the truth will make you free. Today the truth will make you strong and you'll have victory. Today people ignore the truth and they're failures. The truth is in the Bible and you and I must seek it and cling to it. But you know what? There's a lot of liars today that will tell you there ain't no God. They're liars. And this Bible right here says in 1 John 2, 22, Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ, who is an antichrist, that denieth the Father and the Son. That's called an atheist today. Folks, you don't want to be an antichrist. You don't want to be anti-God. Because one day he's coming back with a band of angels. And boy, howdy, the people that's not on his side are going to regret that. But you're not. You're going to rejoice. Don't ever be afraid of Jesus coming back. But he that denies me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. Oh, folks, if only they could see that. But you see, today, we don't want God in our society. No, no. We want gay marriage, and we want to kill our babies if we don't like them. In Virginia, Northrop, he wants you to go ahead and let them have the baby. Look, nah, I think it's ugly. Kill it. Can you believe we actually have people, governors, that push a law like that? Well, we do, folks. And I'll tell you something. 
Listen what this says in Romans 1.21, and you'll see why they're teaching evolution in the schools, critical race theory. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish hearts were darkened. You know what, folks? In 1859, a nut, and I mean a real nut, named Charles Darwin, he went over here to Ecuador to seven islands called the Galapagos Islands, Nobody went there in them days. It was barren, nothing but critters and animals. And he camped out on this island for a long time. And this old nutty, senile man, he got to watching the iguanas as they'd come out of the water. And they were okay on dry land, and they'd climb a tree. They had toenails like a bird, they had scales like a fish. And his imagination got carried away with him, and he dreamed up the theory of evolution. Well, all the atheists in the colleges that hated God and was trying to get rid of God said, this is our ticket, man. We'll start teaching our children. We evolved from these iguanas and things like that. And since we're so much wiser than the rest of the people, we'll make them believe it. And then we can do away with that old pesky God, that old pesky God that wants us to live right and not sleep around like dogs and rats. Well, you know what? Listen to this in verse 22. Professing themselves to be wise... They became fools. And folks, I'm going to tell you what a fool is. Somebody don't believe in God. And that's what they did. And you know what? They changed it. It's our children before that. You know when we first come to America, the only book in a classroom was the Bible. They taught to read from it. They taught to add, subtract from it. Moses had three cows and, you know, so-and-so had four. And they put them together. How many cows did they have? Of course, nowadays that would be 15 with the common core calculation but you know what we use the bible for everything but now now they're convinced us that our forefathers don't want a bible in the classroom people need to wake up but you know something we're lazy y'all we don't study our history we don't uh read up on who we're electing to be our leaders we're lazy and we're losing our country on the count of it we're losing our christianity on the count of it because they changed the glory of worshiping God into monkeys and making us think that that is our forefather. You go to the zoo today, and it says on their cage, our primates. That means our forefathers. <laughs> Listen, Romans 1, 23 proceeding. And change the glory of an uncorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-foot beasts and creeping things. We just creep right out of the ocean. You see, folks, thousands of years ago, God knew that Charles Darwin would come up with this stuff. This man was so nutty. He loved to fish, but he couldn't stick a hook in a worm because he felt like that could be his grandfather. So he couldn't do it. He'd hire a kid to bait his hook for him. In some of the colleges that teach psychiatric his problems are literally used as examples because he was so schizophrenic and he was nutty as a pecan pie okay and now today we have let him dominate our school systems and we're teaching all our children that this man's theory and incidentally not one fact not one fact substantiates evolution check into it don't take my word for it that's that is a fact and you know what they got rid of God and put in evolution, and wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. When we got rid of God, we started losing our morals. When they got rid of God, I remember when I was a child, we prayed every morning before class, said to pledge allegiance, you know. But see, we done away with all of that stuff, and we started slipping. And the devil, you know, anytime there's a void, something's going to fill it. And we removed God, made a suction there, and that old devil just filled that hole right up. Well, you know something? To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. You know something, folks? That's when we had the sexual revolution. You know, I can remember so good. And I was telling my wife just this yesterday after seeing a woman cussing like a sailor. When I was a little boy... If a woman walked into a room, all the men pulled their hats off. They'd open the door for a woman every time. But when we had the sexual revolution and the women's movement, that become an insult to take your hat off of a woman. Folks, that's showing respect. Because the Bible said, you men, you respect your women. And that taking the hat off was showing reverence to our ladies. But these, these things that 
I'm not going to call them women because they're not. They hate women. They hate mamas. They hate wives. They changed that in America today. And folks, I'm sorry, but when I was a kid, you cussed in front of a woman. And some men would say, hey, man, there's a lady here. I've been called down as a kid. And I was, in fact, I believe me and Barry one time was at a basketball game in, in junior high. And I said a nasty word. And our mayor at the time was Charles Copples. And I think it, I think it was. Well, no, he wasn't mayor then. But he said, hey, boy, you watch your language. There's women in this place. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just a, a punk kid, you know. But where did all that go? Now the women cuss worse than the men. And you want me to tell you why? And when I say women, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about the Hollywood bunch. These young stupid girls see these women on TV punching out all the men and using the F word. And now these little girls think they ought to do that. makes them macho. Well, God knew that was going to happen too. And I'm going to read you a, list, a little something about that. In 1 Timothy 3, 6, For this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with their sins, led away with diverse lust. That is called brainwashing and indoctrination. And today that's where we are. They are trying to destroy the ladies of America. And you want me to tell you why? Because they're the backbone of the country. Daddy's out making a living and mama's raising him kids. And mama's teaching him kids what's right and wrong. I know when I was a child, my mother took me to Catholic church every Sunday morning. Daddy didn't even go. But my mama brought me to church. That's how it used to be in them days. Most of all your women were Christians and, and they tried to follow God. And listen to this. Ever learning, never, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Well, that is so true today. There's women and men that will tell you that an unborn baby is just a mass of tissue. There's people that say, don't matter who you love, as long as you love them. Well, that's not what God says. And we're losing this country on account of that. We are being lied to continually. Listen as we go on in Romans 125. Who changed the truth of God into an evolutionary lie. And worshiped and served the monkey more than the creator who is blessed forever. I, I embellished on that. I'm sure y'all noticed it. Because I put monkey there instead of creator. You know. But anyway, for this cause... God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use, which is against nature. Nature Again, in 1960, we had a sexual revolution where sex was okay. Didn't have to be married. It was like a recreational activity. And uh, if people had open marriages where they cheated on each other. Oh, such a wonderful thing back in the 60s. We finally grew out of the dark ages. Folks, that's when we started going downhill. You just look at our history. That's when America, people started killing each other and things started happening. This is what happened. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their era which was deserved. We got blood diseases several years ago from homosexual lifestyle. I know they tried to turn that around, says from the other. That is the bottom line. Men with men working that which is unseemly. It's not right. It's against nature. And you know what we got? AIDS. You know, folks, every time we fool around with nature, something bad comes out of it. Things are natural and things are right. You know, there was no such thing as killer bees. But no, these guys professing to be wise became fools. And they took a honey bee and an African bee and they mixed them. It'll make more honey. No, it just stings you to death when it sees you. These love bugs that are rotting the front end off of your car, they're actually pine bugs. They invented that bug. Did you know that? Them stinky little nasty things didn't exist until they get the test tubes and start experimenting with bugs and biology. And now, two times a year, you can't go down the interstate without spit, splat, spit, 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 splatter all over the windshield and guts running down. The... We invented that. And folks, I hate to tell you, but when men started marrying men and doing the things they do, we created another virus, and it's called AIDS. And we deserve what we got because we created it. You know, folks, I'm telling you, I, I just hate that so much because 
it's really messed up this country. In Romans 1, 20, and even that they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate minds to do those things which are not convenient. Well, we like abortion and gay marriage and hating the Jews, but most of all today, you go and listen to people talk. They're doing something really, really inconvenient. They're electing devils to run our country. And if you get into it and you check it out, you'll find out, well, I voted for him because he's for abortion. Well, what about all the other issues? Well, I don't care about any of that. I just want to kill babies. Oh, I voted for him because he's for gay marriage. And, uh, oh, I don't care about the economy or war or the border because he's for. You know, folks, that's not how it's supposed to work in this country. But this Bible is very clear. The Bible said the people will pick a king that's like them. And the Bible also said when they pick a bad king, the people will mourn. They pick a good king, they'll rejoice. And if you pick an evil king that lies all the time, folks, that's what we have right now. He's going to have people working for him that lie all the time. And that's where we are in this country right now. Being filled with unrighteousness and fornication. Today, sex out of marriage, that don't mean nothing today. <coughs> Y'all remember James Bond? Bond, James Bond. 007? Oh, what a hero, man. I used to love him. I still love to watch him. He wasn't nothing but a fornicator, man. This guy was praised because he was in and out of every bed in every country. That's not something that needs to be praised. He was a pervert. Well, moving right along. Wickedness? Oh, we got plenty of that. Covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy and murder and debate. You know, talking about that murder... I seen a lady this week push a woman in front of a subway train. This is a big, this is a common thing now in New York, place like that. They wait till a train gets there and they hit some old woman in front of the train, watch it grind her up. Fortunately, she didn't get under it. The train hit her, knocked her back up on the thing, just broke all her bones. Uh, debate and deceit, boy, today that's running rampant. Malignancy and whispers, backbiters, and here's the one I really want to haters of God. We are living in a generation where people literally hate God. They hate him. And that's so sad, folks. If they only knew how much Jesus loved them, but they don't want to know, because they might have to straighten up their lifestyle, and that's out of the question. Despiteful and proud and boasters and inventors of evil things. Man, look at the internet and Twitter and Facebook and, and disobedient to their parents. Without understanding and covenant breakers, without natural affection, Yesterday, there was an old uh, a lady walking down the road in New York, and some person come up behind her and way later and killed her. She died. Last week, there was an old elderly woman coming up an escalator, and the guy behind her looked back and bow, hit her, and bow, bleep, bloop, 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 all the way back down the escalator. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? You know, three weeks ago, there was a lady stopped on a great big old high bridge and took all her little children and whoosh, Oosh, threw them all out in the river. I think they saved one of them. Why would you do that? Because you don't have natural affection no more. Demons. That is demon possession is what that is. You know, when I was a young boy, back again, back in the olden days, you touch somebody's kid and that mom would scratch your eyeballs out, man. But not no more. They sell them now. Well, implacable and unmerciful. Who, knowing the judgment of God, they that commit such things are worthy of death. They not only do the same, but they have pleasure in them that do them. Why do you think today, I mean, you look at all the little shows, and I know they don't have them no more, but uh, you used to have Phil Donahue and all them kind of guys, and Maury Povich. And they'd have little freaks on there, man. And they'd come on there and, sir, how long have you been wearing a bra? And the crowd would, oh, a man wearing a bra, we love it. You know, then people are nuts. But yet, that kind of thing is celebrated to this day. And why? Because of exactly what we're reading right now. And you know what, y'all? We are at a point in life right now where good things are hated and bad things are welcomed. You know, I hate that little girl got killed by her little shack-up boyfriend. But here's a young girl, 22 years old, and a guy, and they're riding around America like a married couple doing things they ought not be doing. And he beats her to death and kills her. And they're making a statue of her now in that town with wings on it. 
She wasn't no angel. I'm sorry. If you're going to run around the country having sex with some guy that ain't your husband, don't lift that up to our children as a, a godly hero because that's the example we don't want our kids to follow. And if she wouldn't have been run off with that freak, by the way, that dude there, if study up on him, he hates everybody in the South, and he hates everybody that has any morals of any kind. I've seen a thing on him. But anybody that would live that lifestyle, that's far from an angel. And, you know, I don't think she deserves a statue reared in her reverence because there's no reverence there. But you know what? Woe unto them in Isaiah 520 who call evil good and good evil and put darkness for light and light for darkness, put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And folks, why do you think today they're defunding the police? They're opening the prisons and letting them out and they're giving them pensions and they're firing the policemen that protect you and I in our beds tonight while we sleep. The police are the bad guy now. You remember that show Cops, what you gonna do when they come for you? They took that off the air. It's back on on now. But it's back on a channel you got to pay for on Fox. But it used to come on all the time. But they took it off of regular TV because it was was racist. And and them old cops, they're terrible, man. Y'all all know that. Well, I don't know so much about that. I know they saved many a person's life throughout history. But you know what God says about that? Wherefore you... 2 Corinthians 6, 17, come out from among them and be ye separate. Set the Lord. Touch not that unclean thing. I'll receive you. Folks, today we got to separate ourselves. I see people that won't take up for, for God. They won't take up for their country. You go somewhere to have a tire change and somebody's there running America down like a dog and ain't nobody says a word. Well, I don't want to cause no trouble. But you know something? I can understand that because here lately, I've tried to witness to people, and I've been attacked for it because people don't want to hear about God, and they get mad at you. And just like right now what I'm preaching, people get mad at me about this kind of thing. I get phone calls, and uh, it's very upsetting. But nevertheless, in Galatians 4.16, am I there before become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And that's the bottom line. If you tell people the truth today according to God, they'll hate you. They'll turn on you. And you know something? This next verse, I have to read this to you. I don't want to. But in Leviticus 18, 22, it says, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Folks, there's a such thing as a sin. But when you go into the category of abomination, You're making war with God. Now, what kind of a man of God would I be if I didn't read this to you and tell the people what this says? And the next line, Leviticus 20, 13, if a man also lie with mankind as he lies with womankind, both of them have committed an abomination and they shall surely put to death their blood. Remember that blood disease we talked about? Shall be upon them. Now, folks... I know that people was going to call me a hater for reading that. But I didn't write that in the Bible. I'm mere the poor guy that's got to read it to you. God put that in there. And they called me a hater. Man, if I hated you, I wouldn't care. I'd say, let the hair go with the hide. You die with AIDS or hepatitis, that's your problem. But I'm trying to warn people. You're going against God with this. And America... What's the difference in us and Sodom and Gomorrah? Today it's sad, but they're using our commercials on TV to brainwash and desensitize us. They're not advertising Band-Aids or Alka-Seltzer. They're advertising gay rights and gay marriage and other ungodliness. They're brainwashing the American people. And you know, people that do evil, they hate God. People that do evil, they're not going to read the Bible. They hate the Bible. And you know, folks... I've got to warn you about these things so you can straighten up. Listen here in John 3.20. For everyone that doeth evil, they hate the light. Neither cometh the light, lest his deeds be should, should be reproved. You know, me and the wife was talking about this just the other day. A homosexual, a fornicator, these people can all be forgiven. All you got to say, God, I'm sorry I sinned, and I'm going to try my best not to do that again because I know you don't like it. 
in Jesus' name, and he will forgive you. But the people that this is talking about today is ones that go to the rallies with a sign, love everybody. Well, yeah, it's fine to love everybody, but it ain't fine to crawl in the bed with everybody. Or they go to these, keep abortion legal, and, you know, like I told you last week, there's a woman that went before Congress and said, abortion is an act of love. Yeah, love of yourself, but it, killing your children is not an act of love. But nevertheless, people that do evil, they hate the truth. They hate the light. That's why they'll become your enemy. And you've got to be careful because I've had people hit me before in my own family. Matthew 7, 6 says, Give not that which is holy to the dogs, neither cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. Folks, I'm going to tell you, there are some people that they'll hurt you if you try to tell them what's right because they don't want to hear it. They have to be careful of that. You know, when I was lost, y'all, I have to say it, I was like an animal. I didn't think like I do now. My brain just skimmed over everything, and I was just like an old stray dog lost in his way. And I got saved. It was like my eyes were open, and I began to care about people and see things that I'd never seen before and to appreciate things I never gave a second thought to because I was like a beast. But then when I got saved, the Holy Ghost moved in, and it changed my way of thinking and my character. It changed everything about me. And that's why this right here tells us in the Bible that, listen to Psalm 73, 22. So foolish was I and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. As before God, I was like an animal, stupid and ignorant. Thought I was smart. Well, I was cocky and run my mouth and... I look back on that now, I'm plumb ashamed of the way I was. But when you're a beast, you don't realize that. In John 3, 19, and this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. And that's why people won't get saved. That's why their churches are empty because their deeds are so evil. And Hollywood said it's okay. And many people would rather believe Hollywood than the word of God. Their deeds are evil, and they hate God. You know what? This is how Jesus said it in John 8, 23. And he said unto them, You are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, and I am not of this world. Folks, that should be our goal, is to act and perform as though we're not of this dying, depraved world. We need to act like we come from heaven, and we're going back there one day. We need to act like our father. You know what? Monkeys eat bananas and climb trees because that's what their daddies did. And, and dogs, they like to chase cars and they hate cats. They love to chew on bones because that's what their daddies did. And I'm going to tell you something. If you like to wallow in sin, check up who your daddy is. Amen. Because our daddy loves people. He loves, him, loves God's ways. And if you're of your Father in heaven, you want to be like your Father in heaven. I tell you what, I'm so glad that I don't believe in just this life, but I know that I'm going to continue living. You know, my mom and daddy and my brothers and sisters, they were pretty much all left me, and I, <clears throat> I, don't, I miss them. But I have hope that I'm going to see them again one day. And that's what keeps me going. If I knew I was never going to see mom and daddy or my brother or my sister ever again, uh, that, would, that would be very depressing. But thank God you and I, we don't just believe in this life. We believe this is a stepping stone going to the real life. In 1 Corinthians 15, 19, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Well, folks, I'm not miserable today. I have joy because I know I'm just passing through. And all my friends and all my loved ones, I'm going to see them again one day on that street made of gold by that crystal clear river flowing from the throne of God. And it's coming, folks. People don't believe in God, but they're fixing to find out different because 2 Peter 3.10 says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, and the earth and the works therein shall be burned up. If this is all you believe in, then you are to be depressed. Because this Bible said this earth and everything in it, and all the great things we've accomplished ain't going to amount to a hill of ashes. 
but what counts is where you're going to spend your eternity because you know what? These people build these mansions to live in. I've got a mansion waiting on me where it ain't going to get eat up by termites and the roof never leaks, and it's in heaven. And that's going to be the perfect mansion because this world is about to be burned up. Seeing then all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in holy lifestyle, that's conversation, and godliness? Folks, knowing that we ain't got long, we need to be in church rather than not. And look, here we're living in the last days and there's fewer and fewer and fewer people clinging to God. Man, we ought to be in church every Sunday morning. If you're not sick, if you're not having to work, <clears throat> it's so important that we congregate together. Here's some advice. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Today in this old world, in this critical race theory, baloney, they're brainwashing our children with. They're trying to teach our kids there is no God. And you know what? This Bible in Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. And today that's what we're promoting, destruction and death instead of God and eternal life and perseverance. We're backwards in America because, you see, they think this world is all there is. And if you have that attitude, well, you tend to do that, you know. There's commercials that say we only go around once, grab all the gusto you can. No, no, we don't, we don't go around just once. We go through this life, and then we go to real life. And you need to know that because Second Peter 3, 7 says, But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly men. Folks, ungodly people that don't want God, don't believe in God, trying to convince you there's no God, boy, they're going to see the fire of God fall from heaven. And it'll be just like the people with Noah's Ark when it started to rain and the water started to rise and that boat popped up and started floating. Well, they were really sorry. But it were really too late. And that trumpet's going to blow and we're going to be called up together to meet the Lord in the clouds and everybody left behind is going to see the devil for the first time that he's not the cool rock and roll star that we just love so much. It's coming, folks. Know ye not, in 1 Corinthians 6 9, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. The devil's trying to deceive people. Neither fornicators, James Bond ain't going to make it, nor idolaters. You know, I tell you, folks, that just means people that kneel to statues and pray to statues and stuff. God don't like that. Nor adulterers, nor the effeminate. That's a man that acts like a woman. What well, a day, RuPaul and all them cross-dressers, they got their own TV shows and stuff. You know, men out there strutting around in high heels and pretty dresses and makeup on folks that's just sad it really is it's sad that a human being don't know no better than that and I'm not making fun of them and I don't hate them I feel sorry for people that are disillusioned nor abusers with themselves with mankind but I tell you you know what and you know these idolaters today we have idol worship LeBron James, I see people with his name on his shirt and his picture on the back. And, and that old gal, Beyonce, you know, our kids are in love with this woman. And, folks, she admits before she goes on stage, she goes into a trance, a hypnotic trance, and a demon called Sasha Fierce, she named that demon, enters into her body. And into her mind. And she gets on stage and dances and sings and performs. She don't even know she's there. She said when she comes off stage, gets a dressing room and meditates a minute. Then Sasha Fierce leaves her body and Beyonce comes back into her. You want your kids following that? You want her picture on your daughter's bedroom wall? Well, that's where we are today. And that's why our country <clears throat> is going down the tubes. Well, as we go on, 
Romans 14, 11 says, If you believe in God or not, one day you're going to find out he is. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, that every knee is going to bow to me. And every tongue will confess to God. And folks, people better start believing that. Because one day we're going to stand before God. He's either going to be your loving Savior that you're so happy to meet. Or he's going to be your judge that's going to point to the lake of fire. And the demons are going to drag you off by the heels while you're kicking and crying and screaming. But you know what? It'll be too late. Mm -hmm. In Isaiah 45, 18, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it, and he created not in vain. He formed it to be an habitation. I am the Lord. There is none else. Folks, God created this earth for an inhabitation for his children to grow, to be conditioned, and be conformed to be like Jesus. Heaven is so great. It's so stupendous that we can't just go in there and live. Couldn't handle it. He tried that with Lucifer. He gave Lucifer gift upon gift upon gift. And finally Lucifer said, I'm as powerful as God. Why don't I just be God? You will never do that. Because you'll remember your loved one's funeral. You'll remember sick children that you see on TV in, in Oshner's and in St. Jude's. You're going to remember how you had to work every day. And sometimes with a mean, cruel boss. But you still got to go and provide. And you'll remember when you get older how you start deteriorating and getting sickly. And your bones start getting weak. And your eyes and ears and your hair falls out. And you lose your teeth. You're going to remember all of that stuff. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to look at you, Jim, when I said lose your teeth. I just happened to look over there. <laughs> he hates that when I do it. But you know, folks, it's so true. It's so true that God created this for us. And you better understand the last part of that. He is God and there ain't no other. Buddha and Confucius and Allah and Muhammad. And there's only one Father and there's only one Jesus. And I hope you know him because, you see, you got to believe. That's all God asks from us. He don't ask for no stupendous feats. You don't have to cut a finger off to be saved. You don't have to climb a mountain and starve to death. No, have faith in the fact that Jesus died on the cross. He rose from the dead. He wants to save you and loves you like you don't understand love. And he will forgive you and give you life that will never end in a place made of gold and diamonds and rubies and pearls. That's who God is. But it takes faith to believe that. Hebrews 11:6. But without faith it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And the rewarder of them that seek him diligently. You know, folks, sometimes you've got to seek God. You've got to want to believe in God. If you don't want to believe in him, like the Bible said, willingly be ignorant, you can do that. But if you want to find God, he'll manifest himself to you. If you want to find God, he's out there and he's waiting to hear from you. Today I hope you're saved. And if you're not, he's waiting on you to come say, Jesus, I got faith in the fact you died on the cross and rose from the dead. Save me. And he will, he will save you with no questions asked. We serve such a wonderful Lord. He's so good. He makes it so easy for us. You know, people don't want to give up their sins because they're enjoying them too much. Folks, you know something I found out? Everything that I gave up for God was making me miserable in life in the long run. God don't ask you to give up nothing you need. God just asks you to give up the stuff that's destroying you and driving a wedge between you and him. Let's pray. Father in glory, thank you so much for your word today. And Father, help us to have more and more faith in you. That Father, you're so good to us. We owe you so much we could never, ever repay. Father, if there's one here today that's lost, I pray they come and get saved. And for those watching on television, that they hear this message and realize that you are real and you must be real. There's no other way that we could be here and help them to fall on their knees and call on the name of your son, Jesus for it's in Jesus' name we pray all these things. Amen. Amen.